thousands and thousands of farmers listen to the radio program. We want these farmers to plant the trees in order to regain the fertility of the land. Because this area of ours, we depend on agricultural produce. About 90% of the population depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. This project we are implementing is in the mountainous area of Elgon, right in the eastern part of the country. And the project is basically focusing on enhancing the resilience of both the ecosystem, but also the communities that depend on this ecosystem for their livelihoods. The demo site in Sanzara was established in order to train the communities on how to grow a variety of crops. There are interventions that help to control soil erosion, there's irrigation, mulching and tree planting. So they learn as they work and implement these interventions on their farm. In order to support community-based adaptation to the adverse effects of climate change, IUCN developed an innovation which merges science with traditional knowledge and ensures that this information reaches a wide range of beneficiaries. We partnered with Farm Radio International and came up with a 24-week radio campaign. Through the Farm Radio approach, a participatory radio campaign was developed to promote capacity building and outreach on forest landscape restoration. This is really a pilot project for us. Can we reach to those farmers through these programs in a way that can help influence behavior change? We think the answer is yes. We have also introduced to a border border radio for other farmers who may not afford to buy a radio and also others who don't pick our signal very well. The Boda Boda Rider goes to these communities. They have a particular day for converging and follow the program on the radio. So in the end, they also give their views or opinion, which is recorded and taken back to the radio studios for the others to also hear their views. Knowledge is power. The Farm Radio Project has actually helped us to address the communication gap with really scaling up and ensuring that the lessons from our projects benefit people beyond just where we are working. We have been able to provide a platform for people to share their lessons, to share their challenges, to have their questions answered by experts. Through those discussions and through the lessons, they've been empowered. This was complemented by the Tree Finder mobile application which helps planners to guide farmers to plant the right tree species in the right places. We had the idea to develop a mobile phone application, a tool that can be used for planning agroforestry projects, restoration projects and forestry projects. Immediately by clicking on the map you'll get a list of all the suitable tree species according to the original vegetation. An extension agent can get a list of products and services that the species can provide. And that can then start a discussion of which species the community is interested in planting and taking care of. And if we are successful in demonstrating the benefits of radio program to farmers, we would like to scale this up in other countries like Brazil, Ethiopia, Rwanda, who have all made commitments to Bond Challenge. We see the enthusiasm of the people, the interest increasing day by day. People are working together. This community now has been able to raise over 300,000 tree seedlings. We have had over 600,000 indigenous trees planted. I see a bright future. In the next five, ten years, people come and see how ecosystem-based adaptation approaches work, how forest landscape restoration interventions work, because we shall have all this knowledge put together, all these experiences, all this expertise.